Um. Oh. Maybe it's a maybe it's a connection issue. It could be a connection issue. Zoom usually require very fast speed internet. Is my voice clear to everyone or is it being distorted? Okay. Okay, so we have necessity. Um yeah, necessity means the state of um or the fact of being required. For every word we have two things that we always ask ourselves. First is how I would use this word in the IELTS, like we did in the other um, words that we learned, mm, like the other words uh, in the beginning of the, this class that we, have, we were having. I told you that if you want to learn a vocabulary, especially advanced English vocabulary, you need to know how to use it in your daily life and how you would use it in the IELTS. So if you use it even now, like uh, naturally in your speech, then in the IELTS, you not feel awkward. You will confidently use the word and you will be able to accurately and naturally use the word if you keep using it now. So you need to know how I would use this word and the IELTS and how I would use this word in my daily life based on my experience. So these two questions you need to answer about every new advanced word in English that you learn. Um, so, um, yeah, so we're talking about necessity. So necessity means need something, essential requirement for something. So how I would use this word in the IELTS. Many people argue that some experts claim that in the future, when AI will take over most jobs, there won't be much necessity left for human workers. Some people claim claim that when AI take over most jobs, there won't be much necessity. There won't be a need, a demand. You could say there won't be any demand for left for human workers. And then you can say that I personally believe that. So it's this one I've written um, how I would answer in the IELTS. So if there is a question that a lot, uh, do you think that AI will, um, are you, are you afraid that people, uh, sorry, are you afraid that AI will take over most people's job in the future? Or if this is the question, are you concerned that AI will take over people uh, people's job? The best way to answer an IELTS speaking question is you should start by rephrasing the question. So if the question is that many people are afraid that AI will take over most people's job, what is your opinion about that? You should start by um, saying the question again, but in in different words. That's what you call rephrasing. Rephrasing. So I would say, uh, many people like many people argue that, or like some experts claim that in the future, or maybe in the internet nowadays on the internet, uh, there are many articles about AI will take over most jobs, and there would there won't be much necessity left for human workers. I personally believe that this will not be such a um, concerning issue or there will be new jobs and all that. So you should always start with, I personally believe that, or I feel that, in my opinion, you could say. So this is how you, you generally um, speak in the IELTS speaking. You could also write this in the IELTS uh, or essay section. Uh, this is a good starting for the introduction paragraph. Okay. And the upcoming age of AI, um, the demand, necessity, need. This one, I've written two options. Like I said, you shouldn't use, like, for example, this is you writing in IELTS essay. And the question is, well, there are during the height of, or during the age of AI. So if you can introduce the paragraph, you'll say that, while many people, sorry, what's happening to me? While many people argue that some, uh, while while many people will argue that in the future AI will take over most jobs, there won't be much necessity left for human workers. I personally believe that your opinion, and then you will elaborate the opinion in the second and in the third paragraph, and you will uh, write the same idea, your opinion that you wrote, wrote in the introduction in the conclusion body, but rephrase it, write it in a different wordings. <clears throat> All right. 
So let's say in the second paragraph, you're using, uh, you're talking about that um, there will still be necessity. There will still be need for, um, um, or, or maybe in the second paragraph, you'll tell, yes, there will be no need for human workers when AI is so can So you can say that in the upcoming age of AI, then uh, you've already used necessity so much. Instead of necessity, you should use the demand for AI or the need, the requirement for human workers will be lessened greatly as usage of AI or automation for getting a task done will be more convenient, cost-effective, cost-effective and affordable. They're a similar. So I'm just reading them. So you can, sometimes you can use cost-effective Sometimes you can say affordable, something that's cheap, cost-effective, affordable. So instead of you using all this, oh, this is cheap, AI is cheap, um, you know, employing human can be expensive. Instead of just using uh, cheap, uh, cheap and expensive, you can say uh, cost-effective, affordable, um, yeah, and less time-consuming. <clears throat> so... Uh, and then how I would use the word necessity in my daily life. Uh, I'm afraid that there won't be much necessity for private English tutors in the near future, seeing that the fast-paced advancement of AI in these recent few years. Therefore, I'm thinking of changing my career. So this is a very personal sentence to me. Uh, this is happening to me right now. Chat uh, GPT. G G G <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Chat GBT is coming after my job. Uh, I used to teach people creative writing, content writing, um, anything related to writing and English teaching and all that. Um, I used to get uh, many more students than now, but nowadays everyone can easily uh, get help from Chat GPT and they don't need an actual teacher or they don't feel the need to learn the skill of creative writing and all that. Um, so I'm uh, greatly fearing that my job, um, I don't think my job will be completely like, will, I don't think teaching will completely vanish as a profession, but I feel that I will not get good pay and uh, yeah, and because like with the advancement of AI, more people are reliant on them, people would not like to pay more for a teacher. So that's why I'm thinking of changing my career. So yeah. You can also use necessity according to your job. Maybe you'll say that, uh, I think that um, in the future, the necessity for, um, let's say you're an IT person, the necessity for IT person will increase even more. So anyone, if you want to use necessity in a sentence, maybe you, how you will use it in the IELTS or daily life, your, your choice if you want to use it um, in a sentence. Um, and if anyone is feeling shy, you can use the chat. Um, but I want to see how you would use this advanced word in the IELTS. Like you can write about the system. No, so uh, mm -hmm. Can you can you use this word like yeah. in such kind of sen a sentence? Like a, mm -hmm. <laughs> it is necessity to. 95% people in Russian to go every day <laughs> at work, at works. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a necessity for uh, people uh, to, you know, go to have income, to work, to earn income. It's a basic need. No, is like this nowadays. Like no, is this the synonym of necessary or not? No, it's not like exactly a necessity. Yeah, necessity. Yeah, it's necessarily needed. You could say something that's required, that is needed. Uh, yeah, needed, required. Like, uh -huh. let's say in, in, in the life, yeah, necessary, you can say. Yeah, like in the life of children, the necessity of a parent, the need of a parent, parental guidance is very important. So they can, they grow, they can, so that they grow up with uh, yeah. great manners, a big polite. So you can say, or you could, you know, we use basic necessities a lot. Basic necessities are like, um, like basic needs of humans, like you know, um, clean water, mm -hmm. shelter, clothes, food. That's called basic necessities. So yeah, basically, you could say like in this uh, uh aspect we're using for AI. So you could say in the future, will there be need? 
for AI will be the, will be necessity. So necessity basically means need requirement. Oh, but, so this yes, is a big, like in mm -hmm. a big how to say in the big fact fact. So how 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 can we say like for example, it is a necessity to know the um, about the religion of like uh, mm -hmm. it's necessity to know religion. It is necessity to know the science. Yes. Oh yeah. For um, you know, for children nowadays, it's it can be a, a, yeah, it can be a necessity because if you don't know about science, it's it's hard to go through society with base without basic knowledge of science and medical. Yeah, I can say uh, yeah, it can be a necessity to some extent. Okay. Okay. Uh, mm hmm. So, if anyone else um wants to use this word. Okay, so this is also a good example here. A good book is a necessity when traveling. Is like very much needed, a good book. You know, it will uh, save you from boredom. So it is uh, very much needed, a necessity when traveling. I personally, um, I will take a book with me when I do travel um, my, to my hometown. If there is no internet, I read books. Um, but if I'm traveling, like let's say, in a car or in a bus for long, then I get motion sick. Then I would not read book. Hey, but... All right. Uh, if any of you think of any uh, sentences, I want to see like how you would use these words in the IELTS. Um, but even if you want to make daily life sentences, this is also great. Okay. Um, right. Okay, uh, next we have... Uh, some words, yeah, I think I already discussed it yesterday. So since we are talking about AI, you'll use these words a lot. The impact of AI on people in the upcoming future, on careers, on professions, on education, on medical field, you know, AI is affecting, uh, impacting, influencing. These are words that mean the same thing, but I'm saying the synonym because if you use the same word over and over again, again, the same thing, uh, repetition or redundancy is not, uh, cons it's, it's considered a flow in academic articles. So you need to write for efficient uh, writing uh, and accurate writing, you need to reduce, you need to eliminate repetition of words and uh, you know redundancy. So instead of using always, I think the impact of AI on people can be positive. Uh, like AI will create new job opportunities. On the other hand, I think there can be also be a great negative influence of AI, such as many university students will resort to cheating as it is quite conveni convenient and effortless to have your essay written to chat GPT and you know, Okay, uh, that's overall, maybe in the conclusion, you can say that the effect of AI will depend on the person who is using it. They can use it for the greater good or they can use it uh, in unethical way. So see how you can uh, use different, um, yeah, the same uh, meaning words, but different synonyms. And that's how you sound more academic, eloquent. Okay, again, this word is, um, disastrous if some people who really fear if they're really anti um anti ai like in the beginning people were anti internet because it was taking over many jobs so they would say like oh ai will be disaster humanity is doomed apocalypse is soon uh, coming soon the world, world will end when ai take over everyone um everyone's job but not just that it will rule over everyone and all that so it can be disastrous or devastating is like a really a strong word it is a very um destructive you could say devastating it basically means in a very sad something that is heart-wrenchingly sad situation i wrote this word because i use this word usually for war whenever somewhere war happened i said that Oh, the situation is very devastating. I wish I could do something, but you know, um, as people, we cannot uh, help uh, stop war or conflict. Like the situation that happened in Tajikistan and Pamir, um, I remember last year in June, and I felt very devastated. I would say this word really explains the emotion that 
most family people were uh, feeling this is a very strong word like you can feel sad down sorrow miserable but this is a very strong one devastate you that you're gut-wrenchingly sad about something something very destructive yeah okay then there's unfair unjust okay uh this is lucrative um i use this word a lot um i think it's a good word I have actually wrote it in the inflation one. Okay, let me find it. Oh, yeah, here we have lucrative. So producing a great deal of profit. You can say profitable. Yeah, it exactly means profitable. So, yeah, since we're talking about AI, and there's, there will be a huge shift in careers. In the past, we used to think that, oh, certain jobs are more lucrative, profitable, beneficial, advantageous, you could say. But nowadays, with AI, so many traditional jobs who used to get paid very high, they will lose to AI. So now there will be a huge shift in careers. So we need to think, we need to know, have the insight which jobs will be lucrative. Like I'm trying to find a lucrative career. Um, for me, the situation is rather uh, not quite devastating, but it's a little uh, uh, chaotic. Yeah, it's just a little messy for me right now. A lucrative career as a stand-up comedian. Yeah. So it means profit-making, gainful, remunerative, money-making. Yeah. Basically profitable, you could say. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so lucrative is a very easy word. Um, if you want to make a sentence, in your personal opinion, which career do you think is more lucrative? money making profitable or just overall beneficial advantages you could say i personally feel that the it is very lucrative these days because i feel like there's no danger for it. the it people they made ai but obviously the ai will not come after their own job so uh, and also uh, nowadays everything is so tech savvy everything is digital so if you, you can code, if you can do programming, you will have so many job offers, job opportunities. So I think um, being in the IT industry is quite lucrative. What else do you think, uh, Kara? If you have any future ambition, like maybe you want to be a doctor, uh, do you think it's lucrative? No, I think that uh, nowadays is like a social, um, social medium, yes? Mm-hmm. So uh, everything yeah, so she, which is uh, included, like to um, Instagram, like marketplaces, are uh, all right. Uh, it's really very lucrative, and it how mm -hmm. say it brings a lot of money. Yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I certainly agree with that. Nowadays, influencers. And also like uh, social media marketing, if you sell something to social media, if you have a huge influence, a huge following, you can gain uh, such a uh, profit. You can have such lucrative business. And yeah, so I would say, yeah, digital and social media earning is quite um, lucrative these days. Okay, uh, where are we? Mm, okay, we did necessity. Okay, we haven't come to the metaverse yet. Okay, if anyone else wants to make a sentence on lucrative, if you want, you can write, oh, we have a chat one here. Sorry, I haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah, I would also like everyone to participate. I want more engaging class. I want to like, know your opinion. Even if you can't, um, you know, we can't, if, even if you can't have very intellectual and eloquent discussion that's exact that's like totally fine for now i want you to like have speaking practice all right uh, just hold on mm. um okay all right uh so all right Okay, moving on, we have, um, but yeah, lucrative, beneficial, advantageous, they all basically means the same thing. So the same thing again, 
but even let's say there's a topic. Do you think uh, AI can be uh, lucrative in some professions? So you can, um, instead of using lucrative every time, and that's the thing, uh, when I tell you about paraphrasing that you have to, whenever the IELTS uh, examiner speaks a question, the best way to answer is repeating the question again, but paraphrasing it. So let's say um, the IELTS examiner is asking, do you think that the AI can be beneficial to humans? Or do you think that AI can be beneficial in some professions? So this is the question and how I would answer it. I mean, yes, you can directly answer. Yes, I believe so. I think it can, it can get greatly benefit in medicine and in blah, blah professions. Yes, you could start answering like that. But if you want to uh, use advanced word, this is a very good tip that I would give you. So the question is, do you think AI can be beneficial in certain professions? <clears throat> So if you paraphrase the question again, and instead of using simple word like beneficial, I mean, beneficial is already in the question. So even if uh, so if you use it, it will not be counted as your own word. So you can, uh, instead of that, you can use an advanced synonym, like we have lucrative here. So you can say the answer that, um, yes, I think that AI can be quite lucrative in certain professions, such as, in the medicine, um, it could help with accurately diagnosing many people. Uh, moreover, um, it could also be quite advantageous uh, to people in the business industry. Um, yeah, so you see how you're using different synonyms in the same question because you have to use this word many times usually. And if you use this, if you repeat the question again, instead of using beneficial, you use lucrative and you use advanced word because sometimes you you become confused. Oh, how do I use an advanced word in this question? Because if you don't know any question, any, ad, any advanced word related to the question, you can just paraphrase the question instead of some simple uh, word, you could just use a better synonym. That's why you should know synonyms of simple words so that you could easily replace it with the advanced one. It'll get a score in the IELTS for using advanced word. Okay, next we have some AI related um, terminologies. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, this these ones, um, very simple. I've written very basic um, AI related terms that most people know, like artificial intelligence, the ability of machine, or software to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence, such as, such as reasoning, learning, decision making. So, artificial intelligence is kind of based on human brain. They are made and modeled on human brain so that it can reason, it can learn. So it, it, it's it's fed data and it learns from the data and it can make its own judgment. It can answer to people's inquiry and do so many stuff like human brain. It can imitate creativity and it, it can also give emotional response, jokes and all that. So that's what artificial intelligence is. It's a coding which is designed based on um, imitating human brain, basically. Okay, so you've heard this word a lot, automation. It's used nowadays. Instead of AI, sometimes they use automation. Sometimes they use AI. So what's the difference between AI and automation? So basically, the use of machine or software to perform tasks without human intervention or supervision. In the past, um, programs, softwares, and most of the internet was very scripted, very programmed. So... Let's say you would ask something a so, uh, to a software in a question, and the answer will be scripted. So the programmers or the humans were answering, like you say, behind the scenes. But nowadays, AI, or you can say automation, automation is the type of AI in which uh, the software performs tasks without human intervention or supervision. So it automatically is a reason on its own because, you know, it's an AI. Okay. And then we have machine learning. This word you must have learned. Uh, you have heard a lot uh, on the internet. You should learn machine learning and da da da. If you're in the IT university, maybe you know about it. So a branch of AI that enables machine or software to learn from data and improve their performance without explicit programming. Again, the same thing uh, that I told you that AI 
artificial intelligence is basically imitation of human brain. So what they basically do is they give the it's a lot of knowledge, a lot of data on the internet. Like let's say all the data, all the knowledge on Google is being fed to this AI, um, and then so if this process, this software, it processes that data and can reason after that, it can reason, it can uh, produce output on its own without a script without being pre-programmed, you could say. So that's machine learning, that uh, data is fed to the program, and then it improves their performance without explicit programming. Okay, now here, uh, this one, you must heard it. I want you to introduce to something new, uh, two things. First is this um, virtual reality and metaverse. I would say this is something that's a new that is coming. It has not become... Um, reality for the mass um, for most people yet it's yes but it is already in production so the wealthy people are already the rich business people like facebook Elon musk and you know these rich a tycoon a billionaires are already um researching on this i would not say research but um yeah they are uh, taking trials of the of this uh it's a type of artificial intelligence. You can see these uh, softwares. Okay, we'll talk about it. Uh, so what is virtual reality? You must have heard about it. Um, I used to use an app which was uh, called Reality. This is also a virtual re reality-based program. If you do uh, video games, maybe you'll be able to understand this more. It's a technology that creates a stimulated environment that can be experienced through a device such as headset or glove. So if you wear this virtual reality headset or glove and then you were um then you experience the virtual world the digital world kind of and there's this avatar and you can move around and if you move your hand then your avatar also moves but that's because you have put this headset or those gloves and the sensors are like connected to your nerves so yeah maybe watch a video about it and it will be uh, more easy to understand Okay, then we have biometrics, a technology that uses physical or behavioral characteristics to identify or verify individuals such as fingerprints, face recognition, and voice recognition. So biometrics always exists, you know, biometrics, you know, for identity, like at the airport or in most places to verify identities, they use a computer um, identification scanning uh, system. But nowadays with AI, it will be even more advanced. So the fingerprint face recognition or voice rec recognition will be such um, advanced that there will be less security threats. So this is also a great benefit of AI um, that the biometrics will be more uh, security proof and uh, the security will be very heightened and there will be less you know, illegal activity, uh, illegal activity such as identity theft. People will not be able to steal other people's identity with advanced uh, AI recognition and biometrics. All right. Okay, then we have the metaverse. Metaverse is a very new thing. In the beginning, it's very hard to understand it. Um, but I I actually uh, ha attended a session at Jamaat Khana. It was by a very um, successful uh, businessman. Um, our Jamaat um, from Pakistan who works, um, who have very successful business. I think they're millionaire uh, and they work in Texas and they're now also having very IT related courses for the Jamaat. I'm also starting one as will be the end of this month. And they told us about the metaverse. So the metaverse is something that um, nowadays most uh, people will stop, completely stop communicating. I mean, not exactly, but um, most people will, uh, when metaverse will be a commonplace thing, you will meet your friends, your family in the metaverse, like in the virtual world, in the digital world, you could say, in the virtual world, and you will be so used to the metaverse. So this is not just a place where you hang out with people. This will be a place where, uh, you know, most markets, most, most business will transfer, most singers, most big, big artists like... Um, Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber, they will have their concerts in the metaverse. So you don't need to visit, you know, a city to attend a concert. You can now you can attend Justin Bieber's concert, even though you never had the possibility before to metaverse. So they told us that Justin Bieber is planning to be the first artist to have a concert on the metaverse. 
and his avatar is being built and the artist who will uh, draw his avatar he will he will earn millions of dollars so this is a new job that you will be artist for the metaverse and there's so many jobs for the metaverse and one thing that they told us in the session is that influencers will greatly benefit when um, when it will be the time, the age of the metaverse. So influencers will become very famous. Obviously, they're already famous, but you know, every business nowadays, if they want to have their brand out there, they sponsor, they collaborate with influencers and the same thing will continue. Um, and even it will be even more um, um, a famous method uh, to get to mass audience will be influencer will have even more their influence increased and in the metaverse they will have an even more um connection to their fandom you could say yeah so uh, influencers are one a group of people who will greatly benefit in the metaverse so if you're an influencer um that's a lucrative profession in the upcoming ai future Okay, so what is a metaverse? A virtual reality space in which users interact with computer-generated environments and other users. Yeah, um, I'll maybe show you a, a good video about metaverse. I'll recommend you if you watch a Japanese, there's a Japanese cartoon which came out like in 2020 or 2019, but back then the metaverse, the metaverse was not a reality yet, but they still made this cartoon about it even way before. I think that's a really good example of the metaverse. It's called Bell. Mm, okay, let me write it in the chat. If anyone wants to watch it, mm, it's a Japanese cartoon. So you would understand the metaverse very well. Okay. It's like a movie, animated movie. And then we have, um, obviously we'll be talking about AI carriers. Instead of always using carriers, you can use occupations, livelihood of people. How will the livelihood of people change when AI become even more commonplace? Okay. And then we have loss of employment, employment opportunities, switching carriers, uncertainty. So, with the AI right now, there's a lot of uncertainty about the future of your profession. For me, I'm I have a a great uncertainty. Maybe you you're not um you don't have any uncertainty. You don't have any doubt about your um career being in danger in the future. So yeah, you can say that I'm certain. I'm I'm very uncertain about uh, the future with AI. Or you can say I'm not feeling any uncertainty. <clears throat> I'm <clears throat> I'm sure that AI will bring great benefit to people. Okay, and then we we have in pursuit in yep yeah, or pursuing after better earning jobs. Uh, so if you're uncertain about the future of your profession, if you have quite a great deal of uncertainty about the future of your profession, obviously the best solution for that is that you should pursue after better earning jobs, the creative job, which is AI proof or which AI creates for you, such as there will be so many new jobs in the metaverse. So right now there's so many digital skills coming, which related to the AI. There is virtual assistant, there is uh, audio video VFX, there is uh, digital marketing, uh, there's coding, programming, these jobs, they are really uh, needed in the metaverse when the metaverse becomes more common. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> and certainly must be AI proof. Yeah, you need to find, you need to pursue better earning jobs and certainly must be AI proof. Not in endangered by AI. Okay, so this is a, uh, a second question, if you want, if you have a great knowledge insight about AI, you care about this topic, if you want to write, I would encourage you to write. No, uh, we haven't uh, had any writing practice yet, which is very concerning, especially if you have uh, the IELTS uh, test coming soon, then you really need to have a lot of writing practice. So some people believe that artificial intelligence will soon replace many human jobs in various sectors such as education, healthcare, manufacturing, and trans transportation. Others argue that AI would create new job opportunities and enhance human capabilities. 
what is your opinion on the issue? Give reasons and uh, examples to support your answer. Again, how you will answer this question is that first you will, um, in the direction of, so in the aisles, I've already explained it. Okay, let me bring the... Mm. Okay, where is the... Oh, it's here. All right. So I've sent this material to everyone who are giving the IELTS. If you don't have this, if I haven't sent it to you, then uh, you can message me and I'll send it to you. All right. So this is a very good material because I myself gave the IELTS last year. So it's a very helpful one. Um, all right. So here we have all type of IELTS essays. So you need to understand every type of IELTS essay. In fact, if you start from, uh, um, if I start um, teaching the IELTS uh, essay writing, then I want to cover each type uh, separately so you will know how to answer because you need to answer everyone separately. There's different requirements for all these six types of IELTS essay. So this is for the uh, type two task two essays. So the task two essay is usually longer essays and it takes, I think there's 30 minutes to solve the task two essay and it's usually three to four paragraph answer. And then there's the task one in the IELTS. This is a rather complicated. I think most people are not familiar with this. This is not exactly essay. This is summary of a data. It's usually the data is given in the form of a graph or some a numerical value. So we have four types here. We have graph with a time period, graph without time period, processes, and maps. Sometimes there's directions. So yeah, these, these are basically these being four types. We also need to understand these will come to these hopefully someday. <clears throat> For now, we are here. Uh, so we have this uh, seven type of essays, advantage and disadvantage, expository. Expository means uh, more factual, like I've talked about this more objective. This should be more factual, um, more um, unbiased opinion, academic, my unbiased academic opinion, which are exactly um, known factual advantage and disadvantage of let's say AI. And then we have cost uh, problem and solution. This is usually like, let's say global warming, some global crisis or inflation. What's the cause of inflation? You know, the recent war, COVID, or what's the cause of global warming? Uh, what, what's this problem? What are the problems? What's the consequence of global warming? Now it is temperatures increased, glaciers are melting, flood, and there's so many consequences. So what solution do you propose? So you have to propose solutions. And then we have mixed uh, here, it could be, there could be advantage, disadvantage, also like cause solution. And then we have the opinion. In the opinion, when you can just share your opinion, it should, it should be generally a very general topic, maybe some daily life topic. You don't need to uh, be very uh, knowledge about this, uh, this type of topic to write about them. And then we have discussion. This is a topic in which people debate. So you have discussion and then we have, Again, we have this, again, advantage and disadvantage type. This one is very uh, factual when you have to write the exact advantage and disadvantage that expert says or that is considered uh, globally. But this one is your opinion. You can just write your opinion in this one. Okay. And this is part expository, part factual, part objective, and then part opinion, part subjective. So this is both objective and subjective. So you need to just understand this type of, uh, what, what the type of essay. So like, let's say you have an essay in the IELTS, you give it the exam, and first you need to analyze which type it is. If it's this advantage and disadvantage expository version, if the question doesn't ask your opinion, then you don't need to give your opinion. Then you will not get a full grade. But if they ask, what do you think about this topic? Then this is this one, or this one, or this one. Then you can give your opinion. So you need to analyze which type it is. Okay, but you will see down here, um, there's given for every example, you will know that some of them are very highly opinion, 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 opinionated, opinionated, okay, sorry. Opinionated, opinionated, all right. Yeah, and some are very uh, objective factual, academic, you could say, unbiased. Uh, 
So most of them are usually in um, four or five paragraphs, not more than that. Yeah. And uh, the part one, this short essay, uh, the short uh, writing task in IELTS, it's usually uh, two to three paragraphs, not more than that. But you, if you read this material, you understand um, how each type differs from each other. Anyways, um, back to the question. Mm, there's not this one. Yeah. So first we need to analyze which type of essay this is. I guess some people believe that artificial intelligence will soon replace many human jobs in various sectors, uh, such as education, healthcare, manufacturing, and transportation, while others argue that AI will create new job opportunities, enhance human capabilities. You'll see in the first one, it will replace human uh, jobs. So this is a disadvantage of AI. Right, so instead of being beneficial, it's taking people's jobs. So this you can say a disadvantage, and then the, and this one said create new opportunities. So this is advantage. So this is an advantage, disadvantage type essay. You already understand it. Now the next question is: It uh, expository? Is it this a very objective, um, factual based essay, or is this an opinion based essay? Now it says, what is your opinion? So you already know it's an opinion based essay. So what is your opinion on this issue? So first, um, you need to also write a lot of fact in this one uh, that um, AI will replace these jobs. Yes, this is true that these, these jobs will be replaced. And then this next paragraph you'll write, but these new new jobs will be created. So there's also benefit. But in the conclusion, you'll write your opinion. What do you personally think? Do the advantage outweigh the disadvantage? Or is it more... Um, beneficial or it will be more disadvantageous. So that's your opinion. And yeah, okay, so how you will write it. In the first uh, paragraph at the introduction, what uh, you would do is you will paraphrase the question. So you will write this uh, question again, but in other words, you will not exactly write it as it is. So you will start the essay like, let's say that, uh, in the, with the recent advancement of AI, many people fear that AI will soon take over most people's job and millions of people will be jobless. While many experts and people are also hopeful that AI will create equally many new jobs and opportunities for people so that they can uh, get new type of jobs. And then you will also write your opinion um, on the first paragraph in your right, I personally think that people should try to learn these new type of skill, this new type of job, so they can better adjust to this new job and earn well with this new shift in careers, with the new um, era of AI, you could say. And in the first, um, in the first, uh, sorry, in the first body paragraph, so we had the introduction paragraph and then we have the body paragraph. So after that, the next paragraph will be the first body paragraph you'll write. Um, maybe you could write, start from the advantage of AI that first you should write about what jobs AI will replace. What do you think these jobs will be replaced by AI, these traditional jobs? You can write more facts about this. And then in the next paragraph, you can write these, uh, there will be new opportunities by uh, for AI, not, not just new jobs, but AI can also be beneficial in certain professions or like businesses, for doctors, for programmers. <clears throat> in the last paragraph, you'll write this, um, the introduction or the this question again, you'll again rephrase it in other words, that uh, to conclude, I would say that it is certainly true that AI will replace many jobs, or it cannot be denied that AI will certainly replace many jobs, but it's also um, true that many um, new opportunities and AI can also greatly benefit in new careers. Therefore, I would strongly suggest that people should shift toward this new lucrative career and so that they can earn better with the shift. Um, yeah with this new AI era. So that's how you write it. So you will know that, that if you can speak about this topic in an academic way, then you can easily write about it. Okay. Uh, before that, I want to show something. 
uh, I want to show you how similar uh, essay writing and academic speaking in the IELTS is. So. Okay. Mm. Here we go. Mm. All right, uh, we have a IELTS a type two question. <laughs> Sorry, uh, we didn't answer the type two question yesterday because I want first to read those articles and then you will have better insight, better knowledge about the topic so you can answer it better. But I also want you to know how to answer the type two. So this is this is a very recent uh, type two um, IELTS answer. I have subscribed to this IELTS blog, so I get email sometimes every day. I actually blocked it after uh, giving my IELTS, but I um, unblocked it again. You can subscribe to these and you will get IELTS, new IELTS essays that comes this year in your email. Uh, very interesting ones, actually. They pick the interesting ones. I myself uh, do not like to, uh, to read any article or topic if it isn't of my interest. I like interesting and um, a great uh, something even if it's an, a great knowledge something interesting yeah who likes to read boring, boring stuff so that's understandable all right <clears throat> so this one is an IELTS type 2 question from uh, this here so okay let's see this is a very simple question this is a very daily life uh, question describe a time you were late you should say when it was uh, what you were late for why you were late and explain how you felt about it. So this is a very simple uh, type two, uh, part two, I'll speaking question. But I, what I want you to um, realize here is that the answer here, so generally you get um, five minutes, overall seven minutes, two minutes to prepare, two minutes to prepare uh, and have ideas, write down in the notes, read the question. After two minutes, you start answering and you have five minutes. So in five minutes, you can answer like these. You see, this person has answered in four paragraphs. It'll look like a he. This, this almost looks like an essay. So this is almost uh, an essay. You don't need to answer very long. You should know how much five minutes is. Um, but you need to cover every every part. So this past two questions has this. This is one question. Describe a time you were late. The second question is when it was what you were late for, why you were late, and explain how you felt about it. You shouldn't miss any one of them. So let's see how this person has answered. <clears throat> if anyone wants to read, you're welcome. I will also like assess your reading. It will be a good practice for you to get my feedback on your reading. Um, does anyone want to read? I can teach you. Okay, great. Uh, I generally try to to be punctual, but sometimes it happens that I'm late to appointments. The time I uh, vividly remember happened last year when I had an important job interview uh, scheduled for 10 a.m. I had been preparing for this interview for weeks and was determined to make a good impression. However, uh, one the day everything seemed to go wrong. I woke up feeling a bit under the weather, which made it challenging for me to get ready quickly. Uh, to make things worse, uh, worse, there was unexpected traffic on my way to the interview location. It was frustrating uh, to see the minutes uh, ticking away while I was stuck in a long in a long line of cars. Uh, despite my best my best efforts. I ended up arriving nearly 15 minutes late. I felt a wave. I felt a, a wave uh, of uh, NXT wash anxiety. over uh, anxiety wash over uh, me as I uh, ha hurriedly entered the building. Uh, once I finally found the interview room, I sincerely apologized for my tardiness and explained the reasons for. For it. Uh, fortunately, the interviews were understanding and um, empathetic. Yeah, empathetic. Mm -hmm. Empathetic. Empathetic. Uh, despite my late arri arrival, the interview 
uh, proceed, um, proceed, um, proceeded, 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 yeah. uh, proceeded, and I was able to showcase my skills and qualifications. Reflecting on the experience, I felt a mixture of regret and real life. I regretted uh, not being more, more active and not anti anticipate, anticipating anticipating ah, anticipating anticipating the potential uh obstacle obstacles uh, obstacles that could have uh, caused delays. I was mm -hmm. really beating myself myself up for not leaving home early or checking traffic conditions. However, I was relieved that the interviewers were so understanding and still allowed me the opportunity to present myself. All right. So this is a perfect IELTS um, part two answer. So this is answer gates nine. So you should notice that how this person perfectly answered. So, so they started, I generally try to be punctual, but sometimes obviously they were late. So usually this person is punctual, but sometimes it happens that I am late to appointment. So this there is this word I vividly remember. So you can say it's an advanced word. So this is it's a it has a very simple meaning. So I very clearly remember. Some people has very vivid memory. They can very clearly remember what happened that day. So some people very vaguely remember. Very uh, they don't remember clearly, vaguely, and some people remember very vividly. If you have something uh, accident or something really memorable, a happy moment, then you it's a very um memorable memory for you then you also always vividly remember also i want you to notice that whenever you read an article like we we covered the reading article last time you would notice you saw you, you will find so many advanced vocabularies there you don't need to always find advanced vocabularies in separate pda files or separately the best way to learn um, english words personal to my experience what i do is that i read a lot of books even nowadays, uh, I usually usually read a lot of historical novels, and historical words are very they're not used that commonly nowadays. So they're not beneficial in common speech. But I'm I like to write fiction. That's why I note them down. It's it's helpful to me. And sometimes on social media, I use very historical words, very literature words, so that people don't understand what I'm trying to say. If I'm writing about depression or mental health, I use that clever trick anyways um so i would recommend you if you're an ielts test taker is that when you read these uh, reading passages ielts reading passage ielts answer you should note these words this will be more helpful to you when you pick it up from a passage because then you will know that how this word is used when you speak a word from a reading from a text you will know the context so Two ways are very important to use to know how to use our advanced word in English. First, the grammar, you need to know how to use it grammatically accurately. And second is context, in what context it can be used. Okay, so yeah, I vividly remember it happened last year when I had an important job interview. So now this is this, uh, the first question is that when, if you were late, what were you late to? So it was a it was an important job interview that they were late. So this is answer to one part of the question. And when? So it was a schedule for 10 a.m. Um, I've been preparing for this interview for weeks. I was determined. This could also be an, uh, considered a great word. I was determined um, to make a good impression. However, so you see, I told you to use however instead of but. It's more academic, it's more professional. However, on that day, everything seemed to go wrong. Now, in the next one, you will see that I woke up feeling a bit under the weather. So you already noticed they're using quite advanced vocabularies, but you need to also use idioms, transition words. So you will notice they used quite many idioms in this um, answer. So under the weather means they were feeling a little sick. Uh, which made it challenging. So now you see that you usually say, oh, I'm feeling a little sick today. So you can instead you can use a good idiom. I'm feeling uh, a bit under the weather. I'm feeling a little under the weather today. If it's raining, you usually feel a little under the weather, which made it challenging for me to get. So challenging is also a good word. 
You can say it, which made it difficult for me to get uh, really quickly. Instead, you use challenging, which makes it sound more ethnic. To make things worse, there was unexpected traffic on my way uh, to the interview location. It was frustrating to see minutes ticking away while I was stuck in a long line of cars. So why they were late? Because of the traffic, exactly. And they also woke up late. So now here this 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 part. Despite the, my best efforts, these are like transition phrases. This makes one paragraph connect to the other. So you can say first, uh, one day um, I woke up. I was under the weather. I was late, and then this happened. Then you can say then is the transition word which connects it to the next paragraph. Moreover, I was also talking to my friend on the phone, and I didn't realize the time. So moreover, it connects. Or like, however, this happened. So this, however, moreover, despite these are transition words which connect sentences. Is. In this terms, it it can take uh, it connects this paragraph so that your paragraphs or your sentences doesn't seem like some random separate sentences. They should be um, coherent, connected to each other, so they sound like one fluent, smooth speech. Okay. <clears throat> Despite my best efforts, I ended up arriving nearly 15 minutes late. I felt again there is another um, wave of anxiety, a wash over me, and I hurriedly entered the building. Once I finally found the interview, uh, interview room, I sincerely apologized for my tardiness. This is, there's another advanced word, which is like for your, um, you can say your clumsiness, your dullness, tardiness and explain the reason for it. Unfortunately, the interviewers were understanding and empathetic. Again, empathy, empathetic, sympathetic, you know, sympathy. Empathy is a more deeper um, understanding of another person's feeling that they are. They can be in your, in your shoes. They can place themselves in your shoes and understand your feeling. They're more empathetic. And then again, there's another, um, despite my late arrival, you can use despite, um, yeah, another transition word. The interview proceeded and I was able to showcase my skill and qualifications. And then there's the last question is that, and explain how you felt about it. So we already explained when you were late, there was interview, what you were late for, for the interview when, um, you know, it was the day of the interview when and why, because you, they they were under the weather, they woke up late, and then there was traffic. So there was one thing happening after another, um, troubles they were keep making them late. And then the last part is explain how you felt about it. So how you felt about being late, which is answered in the last paragraph. Okay. And then reflecting on this experience, uh, I felt a mixture of regret and relief. I regretted not being able to um, be more proactive and not anticipating. Anticipating means predicting the future or predicting something, seeing something coming. So you should be, again, two more advanced words, proactive and not anticipating. Can you anticipate the future that how AI will be? Um, is, will it be even more advanced? Or will it, will it say the same? How will jobs be? Can you anticipate it? Okay, uh, the potential obstacles that could have caused delays. I was really beating myself. Again, there's another idiom, beating myself for up or like beating myself over it. Uh, for not leaving home earlier, or uh, checking traffic conditions. However, so instead of but, you should always use better advanced words like, however, it sounds more academic, professional. I was relieved that interviewers were so understanding and still allowed the opportunity to present myself. Again, this is the same thing that I told you, that you should know synonyms of the same word, a lot, many synonyms. Because let's say, they say that the interviewers were understanding and empathetic. So this is the same thing, empathetic, understanding. So you can use, they are used again. You can say that the interviewers are so understanding or you can say they were so considerate. Um, they were so kind. And then they still allowed me to, um, the opportunity to present myself. 
as you can see, that this is quite a long answer. But this is almost like an IELTS essay. So if you know how to answer academically, you will know how to um, write. All right, this is quite long. Um. Um. Okay, Kara. Okay, still, uh, I understand. Um. Yeah, I empathize that uh, you always have to prioritize work. So. I understand. Okay, hold it. Let me check this text. Hmm. Okay, now I will show, uh, tell you uh, how you can find articles related to, let's say, AI, inflation, global warming, any latest global news, any war or anything, scientific innovation. So this is what I do. This is the very um, best way. I don't, uh, you know, I don't have any specific news app or academic article reading app or site that I follow. I just simply rely on Google. So what you do need to do is that, mm -hmm. hold on. Okay. So we, I have this here. Um, this is my Google page. This Google page is usually on your phone. This cannot be... It's not the, it, this is not such customized on laptop, but if you have a phone, I usually le read on my tablet because tablets are bigger, easy to read. I read all my books, university related um, books and materials on my tablet, but you can read all on your phone. It's also quite convenient to read. So if you go on your Google page, you will have these articles. It's usually based on what you research, You what you usually search on Google. It's usually based on that. Okay, let me zoom it here. Um, okay. Um, so for me, I have actually customized it. So if you customize it, you can write uh, which are your interests. For me, I like to read a lot of research about coffee. I love coffee, how to make coffee, but also the science of coffee, the benefits and disadvantages of coffee. I read a lot about neuroscience, how to improve memory. I read a lot about um, zodiacs. I like zodiac and yeah, a lot of the uh, scholarship, uh, any scholarships and all that. So this usually comes in my very scientific articles and also anything that happens in other countries like related to COVID or any uh, crisis. I usually have, I usually have very interesting articles in my um, feed. I usually send it to my friends. If you want, I can send uh, you articles that I find interesting. Or if you find an interesting article, you can share it among each other. But you can all easily find it in your Google feed. So you can find easily articles with their IELTS, some um, national news like about Pakistan, the, the debt uh, and economic crisis is a huge issue in Pakistan. Um, Japan is building its own chat GPG. Uh, so I told you I read a lot about Zodiac. I'm a Pisces, by the way. Um, and a lot of scholarship and science related articles. And also, okay, for advanced words, I would recommend that um, you subscribe to, I read also, um, if you're reading news, um, especially academic articles, you should read articles uh, from sources like, let's say, BBC or some sources that are unbiased, like not very politically inaccurate so uh, sources, because nowadays many countries have their own false news. So they try to be biased to their own government. So you should try to uh, read news from journalists who are um, determined See, I'm using the word determined, who are very determined and passionate about spreading um, factual and true news to people. So people are aware of the truth. You know, there are those type of journalists and news uh, media. It's like, let's say BBC, if you trust the BBC, then you can listen to BBC. I personally like to read from New York Times two type of magazines that I usually read, newspapers. First is the New York Times. And the second is Forbes magazine um, because they, their articles are very academic, you can say. I really like their writing style and they're concise and they use better academic um, writing style. So I use usually, yeah, Forbes magazine and the New York Times. If you subscribe to their um, daily newsletter, you can find email in your Gmail, in your email every day. Or you, I have subscribed here to their and word of the day, so I always get word of the day. And this is not just 
any advanced word. This is very interesting. So this is like a, a academic word. So this as academic academic word, I've already explained words that are used in research papers at university level and articles. Um, yeah, in academic articles, in newspapers and all that. So we have this word histronic. And this word has appeared in 28 articles in the New York Times. That means this is a very academic word. So you can use it in, in the IELTS. So the word is histronic. It's an adjective. There's also the pronunciation written here. And there is also the meaning here, a really dramatic or emotional. So this is an adjective, so it's a very uh, easy word. So, uh, I'm usually, uh, I can be emotional sometimes. So I can say, sometimes I get quite histronic while other, while, while other days I, re I stay rather stable and rational. Okay. And characters of acting or stage performances also can be used for acting and stage performance. The theater performance uh, yesterday was tragically histronic, you could say. Okay. Um, yeah, and also in this New York Times Word of the Day article, uh, they just don't give you the word meaning. They also tell you like how it's used in article. That's what I want to tell you that if you want to learn how a word is used, you should use it in a par you should read it in a paragraph in a passage. You will know in what context it is used. Then you will be able to accurately use a word because most English learners they always use um advanced words inaccurately. So here it says. And then come Katarina and Beauty of Killing Fascists, a work that simply shouldn't work the way it does. Just try to picture a successful play about a family whose quirky little tradition is hunt down and kill fascists. Until the youngest daughter struggles with becoming a, you know, murderer. If the premise of Katarina sound histronic, overly dramatic or emotional, the result is anything but, as a rule, Rory Goss isn't a showy director. He is a humanist at heart. So this is basically talking about this uh, theater performance, uh, Katerina, which is a very dramatic, very emotionally um, emotional and dramatic uh, theater performance, histronic. Instead of using simple words like, oh, that the performance, the theater performance, the movie was very dramatic, or this person is being very emotional, you can say, this person is... Uh, has such histronic personality. The movie was so histronic, I almost felt uh, like crying. So, yeah, so this is a good way to get uh, learn a new word every day. So some days, uh, yeah, I also got uh, this word. I think this one is, uh, I'm subscribed to Forbes magazine. So this one also uh, describes it quite well. So what is demure? When describing something uh, observed, such as clothing or um, attitude, demure means not attracting or demanding a lot of attention. It means like modest or reserved, basically, demure. It can also be used for clothing. Some people who doesn't like to wear very showy, fashionable clothes, instead they like to wear simple and modest dress, which doesn't attract much attention. I guess uh, you could say if you were going to Jamaat Khana, you need to wear demure clothing, demure dresses, because you cannot wear very flashy and, you know, sparkly uh, dress for JK. Okay, um, and it can also be used for a person, person's personality, like it's applied for a girl or a woman. It typically means someone who's quiet and polite. So if you have a sister who's very demure personality, that means they're very quiet and polite. So it, it could, could be a very attractive quality, light in girls if they have their uh, of demure personality. Yeah. Okay. All right, all right. <clears throat> yeah, so you can find these articles on your Google feed if you, um, you know, um, Customize it, or it can also be based on your research. If you're researching a lot of IS related uh, stuff, then it will come on your feed, or just basic visa related. But most part, peaceful countries. I like to read these interesting. Um, usually, I read a lot of book related articles, which books are the best, audiobooks, and all that. All right. <clears throat> so now you know how to find articles and uh, new words. Also, if you read any passages and if you find advanced, you should note it down in your notebook and write 
also write it in a sentence so that you will know how to use it. All right, so. Uh, okay, I think I talked so much. Okay, let's take a five or two minute break. Yo, Rishima, you present. All right, we have two people left. Mm, if you have any feedback, any um, anything you guys want to say about these words that we learned, any tip, any difficulty you're facing. Okay, let's talk about um, difficulties in English that you're facing right now. Anything. Okay. Okay, teacher, I can. Mm -hmm. I think a difficulty is saying we um, learning English, yes? Mm-hmm. Uh, as for me, uh, first of all, it's, uh, it's in English talking. For example, I can um, read in English, uh, write in English, uh, watch English serials or movies. But uh, if uh, but if I uh, but if I uh, oh. don't if I don't uh, talk with anybody, it uh, doesn't matter because talking in English uh, so important to to understand it. Right. Uh, sorry, could you repeat that again? I had some issue with the voice. So, um, I think my internet was slow. Yeah, I repeat. Oh. Um, I think uh, difficulties in learning English is for me. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, if you write in English, if you read in English, uh, if you watch English serial or movies, but uh, if uh, if you don't talk in English uh, to somebody, it doesn't matter. Because uh, if oh, you, yeah. talk, you remember it, new words. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. If you don't have the practice speaking, then you obviously you cannot use the language because it's a language, English, uh, you know, before everything else. Yes, it's a, a source of like a learning knowledge and language of knowledge, science, and all that, but it's a language before everything. So if you don't speak it, you cannot learn it. But uh, I always recommend that if you have like a younger sibling at your home, a cousin or someone who can speak English, and they also want to learn English, tell them that you two should always speak in English. Because if you don't practice the language, then you forget how to use it. Yeah. Do you have someone like that in your life who can speak English with you? Yeah, maybe my mother, my sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try to like, yes, you always use Wahi at home, but sometimes try to use um, English. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what happened? Okay. Um, so I will recommend you this app. I also um, recommended it to um, Rasul. So this is a language exchange app, and this is a very good app. It's a most better than a most language exchange app. It's not a language practicing app. This is more of a language. Uh, if you want to talk with native people of this, like like I'm learning Japanese, I go to this app. There are a lot of Japanese people, and they help me uh, practice my Japanese, and um, I help them uh, learn English. So it's like equal exchange. So if you go on this app, you'll find so many native speaker of English from UK, America, Australia so many and you can talk to them every day you will really like this app some people go there every day to practice their english and this app is really different from other apps because most people here are uh, here for the sake of learning a language they're very professional some discussions are very academic there are a lot of ielts you'll find a lot of ielts students on this app so i think you'll like this app you can get to, to have daily practice with native english speakers on this app and if you want, you can also help some learn uh, Tajiki or Russian because you speak two languages. <clears throat> right. So Hello, it's an equally... Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. Hello, mm -hmm. John. Yeah. Have you tried this app? No. 
Okay, you should try this app. I think it's a, it's a very quite useful app. If you go, go to this app, there's a chat, but you should go to, there's a live, but you should go to the voice. There's this live voice streaming option. If you go there and then um, there is, you can go to the voice room and then you join it and you talk to people in the voice rooms, uh, like from British, America, you know, native English. There's also, you will meet people from China, from Europe, from every continent. And you can make people, uh, friends from so many different places. I think it's a very fun app. And most people here are very professionals. Most of them are like adult. Kala Sami, um, I'm so glad to have you in my class today. How is your practice going? Hello, how are you? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, your voice is clear. How are you doing? Sorry, you know, I, I couldn't, uh, I noticed your message very late and I joined your class and I, I, don't, I don't know that how much passed from your class and uh, I interrupted suddenly in your class. And oh, uh, it's fine. Yeah, uh, is it, uh, you can... it's okay, mm -hmm. you know, my practice um, was good today and uh, last night, I could learn many things uh, from your class as well uh, about uh, say something about ch chat GPT or uh, artificial intelligence, something like this. And it was so practical for me. And I try to uh, speak with some English partner today and uh, I learn many things from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good, but uh, I tried to write uh, the um, topic that you sent for me, and I um, I just want to rewrite it again uh, because um, it wasn't very clear, and I should send for you, and then if you find the time, please uh, uh, correct uh, my my writing. And yeah, just this, uh, nothing else. Thank you, thank you to invite me to your yeah, class. Yeah, take your time whenever you can join. Most people here are working, are university students, so they're usually busy. So whenever you can join, it's fine. And I'm glad to be of any help. So I mean, like um, Sami said, uh, she also practices her English with native English speakers on Hello Talk every day. I think it will also help you because in Russia, you know, most people don't speak English. So I think it will be a good um, practice for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Uh, is he from Iran or he is living in another country? So he's from Tajikistan. I mean, do you live in Tajikistan or uh, Russia? No, I'm, I'm living in Moscow, Russia. Oh, yeah, Moscow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because his name is uh, like Iranian people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean they speak Tajik and Tajik is like uh Farsi, Iran, yeah. I mean yeah, Farsi, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um yeah. So I used to live in Russia in 2019 till 2020. So I've been to um yeah, I know a few people uh you know from primary people um who used to visit Jamaat. Anyways, um Okay, so if for the next class, if you guys want anything specific, like I usually plan my class according to what students want. Like last class, Rasul wanted to discuss AI. So I arranged the class about AI. If you want any specific topic, I can arrange it for the next class, Sami or Amin. Uh, maybe like grammar or maybe speaking, reading or about any topic, anything. 